Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Simon Fry, a consultant in clinical neurophysiology. Welcome back to the channel and in this video I'm going to be exploring the sciatic nerve and problems associated with this nerve uh, for you. In previous videos I've talked about lumbar radiculopathy, piriformis syndrome and a variety of causes of foot drop but we're going to be specifically exploring the sciatic nerve in this video. This video will be comprised of two parts. The first part will look at the anatomy and general issues relating to this nerve and in the second video I'll be talking about traumatic injuries to it from a variety of sources. If you're new to the channel please do support the channel by hitting the subscribe button below. Now, to make it a little bit more interesting for you, I thought I might share with you an anatomical specimen rather than just a drawing. If you feel squeamish or if you're under the age of 18, you may wish to skip all of this towards the end of the video for further information. The sciatic nerve is, of course, the largest nerve of the body and it forms roughly at the level of the buttocks and then makes its way down, supplying fibres all the way to the toes. I thought it might be appropriate to uh, focus in on this particular specimen. Uh, it's a very famous uh, anatomical uh, table from the Royal College of Physicians and uh, it looks at the nervous system. They've got a variety of these. You can find out more information about their fascinating history and even have a look at an amazing 3D rendition um, of this uh, online uh, and I'll put some links to them uh, below. Now there's a lot to talk about here but let's just uh, make our way down this. So first of all we start with the brain and somehow they've managed to render these 3D structures into a simple two dimensions which makes it quite tricky but the brain is fairly straightforward over here and then we'll make our way down the spinal cord and you can see the cervical nerve roots, the brachial plexus down to each side, the thoracic nerves flowing out beneath the ribs, the phrenic nerves and even the sympathetic chain here on the anatomical left side of the specimen. As we reach the bottom of it you can appreciate its cone-like ending which is called the conus medullaris and the dural coverings have clearly been maintained. You can also see the spinal nerve roots coming out of it giving it more meaning to the collection of nerves while still beneath those coverings known as the corda equina or the horse's tail. Over here are the lumbar 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 roots followed by the sacral 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and coccygeal nerves which become increasingly harder to differentiate as we go down. We'll just follow down the sciatic nerve that forms here. Don't get distracted by our Italian stallion. Though it splits into different branches you can see the fibres go all the way down to the toes though it does change names en route. If you've ever wondered how we can test the nerves all the way uh, to the spinal cord from having a look at the peripheral nerve stimulations all the way up, now you can really appreciate just how everything is in continuity with each other and we can ping those signals up and down. We will now focus on the formation of the sciatic nerve itself and you can see there are two quite distinct parts to its formation. There's an upper part and a lower part. The upper part takes fibres from the L4-5 levels and the lower part takes fibres from the S1, S2 levels. These would correlate to the known predominant muscle innervations of the perineal and tibial nerves respectively. They're not entirely exclusively. Whilst you can't see this formally as the outer nerve sheath has been left intact, the perineal and tibial divisions though are brought together within the sciatic nerve sheath but are actually mainly separate structures and it's incredibly important in beginning to understand sciatic nerve lesions as quite often there are discrepancies in how these different divisions can be damaged. As a general rule the perineal division is much more susceptible to damage than the tibial division. There are a couple of proposed reasons for this. Fibre density of the perineal nerve fibres is greater than in the tibial nerve and because of this any damage sustained to it will have a greater amount of damage as more fibres are being damaged. There's also tethering um, of the perineal nerve. Of course we know it's anchored around the fibula neck and so that can increase its susceptibility to being stretched for example. I've also talked about the upper and lower parts um, in the thigh but the thing that you can't see is actually within the sheath itself as it goes down it becomes more lateral and so more superficial within the nerve sheath and therefore that might also be a reason why those nerve fibers may be more susceptible to damage. Also more of its branches once it's uh, come out of it are relatively superficial too and therefore that might also be a reason for it to be more susceptible. 
And so basically, because it's such a large and thick nerve, it takes a lot for it to become damaged. And so medical causes for this are actually relatively rare. The most important cause is trauma. And what better early illustration of this is a classic depiction of Jacob's uh, fight with the angel by Eugène de la Croix with a sciatic nerve strike. Following that, of course, are unfortunately medical mishaps uh, relating to uh, intramuscular injections into the buttocks or um, hip uh, replacement operations and more about those in the next video. The rest are actually fairly rare causes. We've discussed piriformis syndrome in depth separately, uh, but just to highlight a couple of them within the acquired causes. Infections such as pus forming abscesses, inflammatory causes such as sarcoidosis or idiopathic autoimmune neuritis. Um, tumours are especially important, particularly uh, within the paediatric cohort, but also adults as well, uh, particularly with things such as lymphoma. Vascular causes, particularly when acute, can be quite devastating uh, injuries too. And whilst this is, of course, a neurophysiology channel, the principal investigation for sciatic nerve lesions is actually imaging with MRI. And when I do come across some which isn't trauma related, then I will suggest that the entirety of the nerve is imaged together with contrast because one doesn't want to miss anything. Treatment and prognosis are very much cause specific, so apologies that we can't explore that here. Um, in detail or even in the questions for individuals. However, in the next video, we will explore trauma in a little bit more depth. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have, please do support the channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Comments are always encouraged, keep them coming, but do keep them general, as I can't answer very specific cases for specific people. So thank you for watching, and looking forward to seeing you in the next video.